Welcome to the Windows and Computer channel and this is another video where we take a look at an option in the Windows security app which is of course the equivalent of Windows Defender if you want. Uh, note that all the options I show you here are on the May 2019 update so if you're on a previous update and you don't see or there's something missing it's possible but as you'll move towards the latest versions of Windows you'll eventually have these options available. The next option that we talk about today is device security. This has to do a lot more with uh, hardware type security than software type security. So in here you will have some hardware security options that your PC might have. Um, if you have a really really recent PC you might have more security options than I do. And of course if you have a really old PC there are things that might not be available. So it depends on really the hardware you use, uh, either on the computer itself or external hardware that you can plug in USB devices that typically can uh, make your PC more secure. One of the options here, core isolation. What is core isolation? Well, this is typical of very, very specific apps and hardware requirements within the computer. In my computer, this cannot be enabled. But in some PCs, you can actually isolate core process. That means that these features are running kind of in a virtualized environment that separate them from the main PC. So when you run in core isolation a process, it technically cannot be altered or infected by um, anything that is outboard or outside of that isolation. It's kind of building a really strong security wall around the application that's running. And of course you can turn on memory integrity that also kind of virtualizes the content and it makes sure that nothing can modify or access the um, you know code that's already written in RAM memory for example. It's very specific to computers that can do it um, typically this is a feature that can be run on more recent devices. It's not all devices and not all the CPUs are able to actually give you course isolation. But it's really for very important applications. I get people asking me from time to time, should I run core isolation to stay safe? It's not recommended because most of what you have will either not run in core isolation or if they do, it restrains so much the access to the app or the program that often it will simply not work well. This is really for very specific features that demand very high security. Then you have Secure Boot. Secure Boot is a norm that was actually kind of uh, done by PC manufacturers many years ago. Secure Boot is on on this machine. And what is Secure Boot? It's simply that when the PC starts, and it wants to get an operating system. What happens is the operating system needs to be signed or needs to be uh, built in a way that it is actually going to prove that it's a software that is okay to run on your PC. It's designed by the manufacturers to make sure that the software or the boot up system cannot boot up malicious software or viruses. Now, there's a lot of controversy with Secure Boot because it often s prevents many um, boot up processes from like Linux, for example. A lot of people want to have Linux running on their machine. Well, they can't boot when Secure Boot is on most of the time because the Linux distros they have are not signed or approved for running. So a lot of people took this into consideration saying well this is a way to block other OS from running on PCs. Now the thing is secure boot can be turned off on a PC so whatever you think um, it, it's kind of difficult you know of course PC manufacturers when, and Microsoft and all of that are probably kind of hand in hand in building stuff so of course Microsoft will not say hey don't we, uh, we don't want secure boot because it knows that Windows can boot but many other operating systems can't. So yes, there's controversy and there, yeah, you know, I understand the feel that people have about Secure Boot. There are some Linux distros that have been uh, approved and signed for Secure Boot, but there's not a lot of them because it costs money and, you know, Linux distros being what they are, the 
usually you don't want to pay for anything so um, basically secure boot exists on most PCs most modern PCs and uh, basically this is to technically keep your PC safe from running malware driven operating systems but um, you know so if you want to boot for Linux or stuff like that you probably have to turn off secure boot on your PC and finally there's star standard hardware security not supported uh, it's other hardware type security devices that are capable of keeping your PC safe mostly on enterprise PCs so uh, anything from um, a um, security key that will prevent your PC from actually starting up unless you have that security key in one of the ports to uh, other types of um, hardware security like uh, thumbprint readers and stuff like that so this is really more on the hardware side of devices and it will be very very different depending on the PC you're using if you enjoy my videos please subscribe give us thumbs up thank you for watching